guys and welcome back to the channel and it's been a while since I've uploaded a video there is a good reason for that I had an incident with a cheese grater and I basically grated my left thumb it was quite bad it went through the nail so I've been unable to hit balls pretty much since uh, pretty much since the last tour event so it's been about a week since I've swung a club and it's probably going to be realistically another week or two before I'm able to swing a club again um, just with this injury. However, that being said, I'm still going to upload a few videos. I've got my Xput RG video today. I'm going to be doing a whole new how I built my simulator video. And there will be a couple of other random uploads that I do over the next few weeks while I heal. Let's get started with today's video. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing my full review of the Xput RG. And to me, this unit is the perfect complementary device to the Garmin R10 or the Rapsodo MLM2 Pro. Both of those units you can't part with at the moment. I have been told from the guys who are trying to hook the MLM2 Pro up to GS Pro that they actually found some putting software or putting code within the code on the MLM2 Pro. So potentially Rapsodo have thought about maybe bringing putting to the MLM2 Pro in the future, who knows? Or they tried to, it didn't work, no one really knows. All I know is there is some code in there for putting. Whether they're gonna actually announce this or use it, we don't know. So the XPUT RG is the perfect device in my opinion to pair with these two devices. I have used this XPUT a lot since I've got it and it's really helped me with my putting stroke. What it's really highlighted to me is that face angle at impact is key with putting. We'll get into the nuts and bolts of it in the video, but this device is really, really good for home use. If you, like me, struggle with your putting, this is something that you can use at home alongside your launch monitor to actually practice putting and get better at putting. All right, so let's get into this. I've got it set up in my garage. Usually I just set this up in my living room and I, I've been using this a lot at night when I can't come in here and use the sim. I'll just hook up the X part. I'll just roll some putts for about half an hour. And it's honestly a really good device for practicing. All right, so when you first boot this thing up, you're greeted with your home screen and I'm not able to get the video from the actual unit onto OBS to screen record, but the projector that I have is just so good. This is a 4K projector. The projector is so good that you guys can hopefully see everything perfectly um, doing it this way. The image itself isn't perfectly fit to my screen and that's just because my screen is not a perfect 16 by nine or 16 by 10 aspect ratio. I am running this currently in a 16 by 10. It's the best fit I could get for this. All right, so what you get when you first boot the thing up is you're greeted with your home screen, and this is where you select your profile. You can create different profiles for people. I've created my own profile. This thing actually does hook up to your Wi-Fi, and that's because you can play online with people. So going in and selecting your profile, what it does now is it actually syncs up, and the camera, the device uh, just there, it actually looks for your putting mat and it uses those white rectangles and it goes through different exposures and it just figures out, hey, how much light is in this room and what exposure do I need to set the camera out to capture the ball? So it does that, it does it incredibly quickly. You probably saw it a little bit at the start. What you gotta remember with this thing is it is a camera, so it does need light in the room to be able to actually use the correct exposure and so it can see the golf ball move. Unlike the Garmin R10, so the Garmin R10 you can use in complete darkness, it wouldn't make any difference. This thing's a camera, so it needs to have light in the room so it can actually see the mat, the putting mat. So once it's done that, you just select OK. Hopefully you won't have too much problem with putting. Um, however, my kids use this and they sometimes do full swings. So yeah, play at your own risk. Okay, next you're met with kind of like the home screen. And in here, you've got classic, you've got multi, and you've got explorer. So if we go into classic first, this is where I spend most of my time with this unit. And it's in the practice section. So you've got practice, play nine and then challenge. So I'm gonna jump into practice mode and this is probably where I spend 95% of my time with this thing. And now what you get is a screen, you can select uh, your dexterity, your green speed, um, you can select the practice screen that you wanna to go to. 
with the expat RG, the RG stands for real green. They do have the real greens in the other section. You can't use them in this section. So pretty much here, you're just selecting, do you want to be the lake, sunset or waterfall? I just leave it at random. I'm not really too fussed about that. The next thing you get is you can go and choose your distance mode. So do you want to have a fixed distance? Do you want to have a random distance or an increasing distance? I usually leave this at random because it's going to give you more of a realistic practice session and a, and, a, and a good practice session. And what I mean by that is you can choose the next two lines are the max distance and the min distance that you want to part from. And then what the device does is it just basically chooses a random distance anywhere within that window that you've selected. And what I like about this is you're not always going to have a 15 foot putt that realistically after two or three putts you've self calibrated and you can just do it all day. By having a random distance selected, it really makes you think about each putt and really gives you something to focus on with each putt. This is something that needs to be implemented within GS Pro, Awesome Golf, E6. They basically need to do this for wedges. And I've been saying this for years. If you could go on Awesome Golf and say, I want to hit wedges from say 10 yards to 120 yards and randomize the distance for each shot, that would be one of the best practice tools that you could get hands down. I really hope Awesome Golf or you know, GS Pro, one of, the, one of them does that. I will have a full review on Awesome Golf coming soon, so stay tuned for that. And that's gonna be one of my suggestions. Okay, so from there, you get slope as well. If you wanna have slope on the putt um, and the rest of the list that goes on. You also have an option for tempo. And what that does is you can actually set a tempo that's gonna give you something like a TikTok in the background so you can actually do your putting stroke to that tempo. For me, I don't use that. From there, you can go start. So I've chosen minimum distance five feet, maximum distance at 20 feet. I'll just quickly show you what the maximum distance you can select is. You can go all the way down to 50 feet. Um, for the purpose of today, and for the purpose of my practice, I kind of like to stay in the shorter parts. I think I get a lot better practice out of doing the shorter parts. For me personally, with the longer parts, I like to practice those outdoors and really get a feel um, by looking at the hole, something that you can't really do with simulator golf. So for simulator golf, I do like to have um, shorter parts to actually practice on. Okay, so let's go start. Okay, and from there, we've met with this screen. You've got all of your data there on the right-hand side, and you've actually got a overview of your putting stroke on the left-hand side there. We've got a 12-foot putt, it's dead flat, with this, you put your ball in between those two white dots and two black lines. I'll put that on screen now. And all you're doing is placing your ball in between there and the camera will lock onto that position. Okay, once you've got the ball there, it'll say ready and we are ready to putt. Okay, that felt outside with a, with a bit of a closed face. It did go in. Now, from there, you're gonna get your metrics on the right-hand side there. So ball speed was 4.4 miles an hour. Launch direction was 0.5 of a degree left. Distance was 12 feet, it went in the hole. Putter path is 0.7 to the right, and the impact angle of the face is 0.6 left. And then what you get is you get an overview on the left-hand side of the screen of your actual putter path. And I love, I love this overview because what this overview is doing on the left-hand side is just getting all that data and putting it into a visual representation on the screen of what your putter did through that stroke. And hopefully from what you guys saw from my uh, cam two down here, hopefully you saw that the putting stroke matched what you're seeing in the metrics on the screen. So once we're done that 12 foot putt, now it's given us an 18 foot putt. So again, it's just gonna choose random distances from five to 20 feet for you to putt. All right, let's do a couple more putts. We've got 18 feet. Lovely, that was a really good putt. Okay, that was actually really good. So what we saw there, ball speed 5.4 miles an hour. We had uh, putter path was 0.3 right and my impact angle was dead straight. So that's really cool. That was a really good putting stroke. And hopefully 
what we saw on the, the Cam 2 match that. One thing I forgot to say with the X-Part and the X-Part RG, to actually capture your face angle, you have to put white stickers on the toe and the heel of the putter. And that's just so the unit can actually see your putter face and so it can give you those metrics on the right hand side of the screen there. You do get some stickers in the box. You get about a pack of 20 stickers or there or thereabouts. What I did is I just went online on uh, Amazon and I got a pack of these Avery stickers. So I'll show you that. Uh, Avery stickers there. These are 12 millimeters in diameter and you get 270 stickers and I think these were about five bucks. They were really cheap. The beauty of that is when you're gonna go play on course, you actually can't have these stickers on your putter face. So you, you gotta take the stickers off. So if you're using this thing at home, say during the week, and then on the weekend, you're going out and playing in your Saturday comp, these stickers have to come off. Otherwise, someone could potentially say, hey, you're cheating. What I did is I just bought a pack, 270 stickers, they're dirt cheap, and you got plenty of stickers now. Okay, let's hit another part, and we've got 12 feet. Felt like a good part. Lovely. Now, this is gonna be interesting. So my ball speed was 4.2 uh, miles an hour. What was interesting there is my putter path is saying it was 3.3 degrees right, but my putter face angle was 0.5 of a degree left. That's really interesting. And I'm really hoping that when I put this camera, um, when I watch this back, I hope I see that using cam two. Before getting this unit, I was really wrapped up with putter path and I used a mirror and I've used a mirror since I was a kid. I love putting mirrors. I think putting mirrors are fantastic. I still use mine now, but what this device has made me realize is that putter path, yes, is important, but what is more important by a long, long way is impact angle of the face. Okay, we've got an eight foot putt. A little bit outside it felt. We did make the putt. So that one there, putter path was 1.8 degrees right. Impact angle was 0.7 of a degree right. And this is something I've noticed with my stroke and I've always missed putts right when I'm on course. And since having this X putt and using it a lot, I've noticed a trend with my putting. And the trend is my putter path always tends to be a little bit right but more importantly, my impact angle of my face tends to be slightly open at impact. And that's the common trend that I've seen in my putting. If I hadn't had this device, I would have never have known the common traits or trends of my putting stroke. What's cool about knowing that information is that it can actually influence what putter you use or how you putt. For instance, I have a spider, which is pretty face balanced. It, um, it definitely has a bit of toe hang in the putter itself. If I was to buy a new putter, I would probably get a putter that's a bit more face balanced. Maybe not all the way face balanced, but I'd definitely be looking at something that's a bit more face balanced than this putter if I was to purchase another putter. And that's because if I get something a bit more face balanced, I'm gonna be able to close that face a lot easier without trying to do it. So from having this X putt, it's actually giving me the information that I need to then take and purchase a new putter. And this is vital information. And this is information you'd get if you went and did a fitting on a really high-end device, but it's also something that you can do now at home just using this X putt. If I was to have a heel shaft of putter that was severely toe hanging, I would miss every putt to the right because I just wouldn't be able to close the face. Okay, let's hit one more 18 foot putt and then we'll look at the rest of the software. Okay, it wasn't a great stroke, but my impact angle was dead straight and we made the putt. So again, putter path three degrees to the right, impact angle was 0.1 left, so perfect. And I have made some minor adjustments since getting this X putt. I've moved the ball slightly forward in my stance just to give me that little bit extra um, help to, to close the face. And it's definitely working. I'm definitely closing the face a lot more consistently and a lot better since I've made that adjustment in my setup. Another thing to remember is with putting, and this is really important, with putting, 
if you have a 12 foot putt dead straight and you can set this putt, you can, if you wanted to, you could set it to 12 feet. If you have a 12 foot putt dead straight without any grain, without any influence, if your putter face at impact is a degree open or a degree closed, you're more than likely gonna miss that putt right or left. So from 12 feet, as long as you're within a degree face angle from the hole, you're gonna make the putt. That's information that's really good because then you can start practicing that with this device and really honing in that skill of being able to match up the putter face at impact to have it square. And the other thing you gotta remember is as well, it's not where your putter face is at address. A lot of people get wrapped up around getting their putter face square at setup. It's not the biggest deal if you have your putter face a little open or a little closed at address. What matters is impact angle. That's the biggest thing. And that's what people have to remember. One of the best putters of all time, Tiger Woods, he actually set up quite open at address. But then at the moment of truth, at impact, his putter face was quite square. Okay, let's move on. We're gonna have a look at some of the other stuff you get in this software. Like I said, I spend probably 95% of my time in this section. And, and the reason for that is I love the data. I love the metrics you get. I love hitting a putt and then seeing exactly what that putt did and how it influenced where the ball went. When you finish, you do get a little analysis section and I'm gonna show you that. You can go over to the left, go down and finish the session. And what pops up now is your analysis screen. And the more you do this, the more data this thing's gonna collect. And over time, it's gonna give you historical uh, tendencies in your putting stroke. I have, like I said, I've seen the tendencies in my putting stroke and I know my tendencies now. And it just gives you more of an idea of what you need to work on, what you need to practice. So if we scroll over to distance, that one there, um, pretty good. Like I made quite a few of those putts. From there, you've got your average distance and your average variability as well. Going over to impact angle, and this is really, like I said, for me, this is the biggest thing. You can see that on those putts, I tend to have an open face when I impact the ball and therefore tend to miss to the right. And that's exactly what I see on course. Uh, you can go over to path and you can also see the tendencies in your putter path. Again, mine being my putter path going to the right. And that's exactly what it's saying there on screen. All right, let's get back out to the main menu. The other option you have now is you can go play nine or challenge. And play nine is simply, you can go, this is where you get your real greens. This is where the RG comes into it. And this is why you would purchase the RG over the original X putt. You can go in here and you can select a number of players, green speeds. And then you can also go in here and select, we'll go from the course list. From here, you get countries. So you can go random, X putt, Japan, Korea, UK, USA. So if we select USA, we'll jump into there. You can sort by state, or you can just sort by all of them. So we'll do that. You can sort alphabetically, and then also you just get which golf club you wanna to go to. There's not that many on here. I mean, there's there's quite a big list, but compared to the number of courses, say, that GS Pro has, um, or, you know, TGC, some of these other softwares, there's not that many in there. I'll just go through a couple of these. So as you can see, there's a few in there. And what I'll do is I'll go and play a course that's in New York, um, we'll go to Patriot Hills Golf Club and you can choose the back nine or the front nine essentially. So out is going to be the front nine and then in is going to be the back nine. We'll play the back nine. And from here, you get a choice of the background scenery, I guess, that you want. To me, it doesn't really matter. You can choose random. So the greens themselves are going to be the greens and they're mapped out uh, using LiDAR based on the course. So you're going to get the actual contours and everything on that golf course. So if you were a member or you're gonna play a competition at this course, this would be a really good tool to use to get to know these greens. The actual background scenery though, isn't the scenery out the golf course. Um, from there, you're gonna get um, top right, you can see kind of a contour map of this green. And then also, just like in GS Pro, you get those uh, little um, lines moving right to left, indicating a right to left break on the putt. You can use the remote that comes with the unit to adjust your um, line. So we'll go aim a little bit to the right. So you can aim, I guess, in game, or you could just aim to the right when you're actually set up on the mat. With this, you don't get all those stats and you don't get an overview of your putter path. So I tend to not use this section just because I want those stats. And 
if this did give you the stats, I'd be more inclined to use it. And I think they could definitely add the stats in on this page, and I don't know why they don't. Um, you buy this unit because you wanna see all that information and the data. So I don't know why they hide it. I wish they would just show it or at least give the option to turn it off if you don't want it. If you don't want it, you can turn it off. If you want the stats, you can turn it on. Um, that would be a really good option, I think. Okay, so we'll hit this part. We'll aim a little bit to the right. You can also as well, you can actually aim on the putter mat itself. If you hover your putter over these little indicators, it does aim right or left. I personally don't use this. It's slow. It, it, you can do it, but it's just a little bit annoying. Um, and I tend not to use this just because it's just easier to use the remote. So we'll aim using the mat. I'll try go left. Oh, it's just sinking again. See, I, I just tend not to use this. I'll just use the remote, aim where I wanna aim and we're done. So what I'll do is I'll just hit a putt now on this screen so you can see that. So we've got 44 feet, we're downhill two inches. So it's gonna play about 42 feet. Okay, not a bad putt, might be a bit short. And yeah, it's gonna come up short. It went 34 feet, so not too bad. Uh, and then we're left with a nine or a 10 foot putt downhill slightly. So what I'll do on this putt is I'll just aim right in the actual uh, sim room itself. So you'll see that on camera, I'll aim a little bit to the right. Oh, probably just aimed a bit too far right. And that's gonna roll past four feet and it's making us hold it. So we got four feet now. Oh, just, just curled it in. Right. I did select two players, so I'm gonna now have player two's part. So we've got 43 feet, we're uphill seven, so it's gonna play about 51 feet as a feel. Okay, let's, we'll just aim left in the room itself. And we've got about a 50 foot putt. Not the best stroke. And it's gonna leave us about five feet. And this actual mat, it's kind of thick. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like a thick uh, mouse, mouse pad. That's kind of what it feels like. It, it does feel like a quality mat. And you've also got memory foam that the ball hits into. And it's actually quite effective at stopping the ball. When I first got this, I did, it did kind of freak me out hitting and the ball stopping instantly. I'm now used to that. It doesn't bother me at all. All right, let's line this one up. We got uh, five feet, essentially. Right in the heart. Okay, so that's a quick look just at the Play 9 feature. Okay, from there, the next section you have in this classic um, part of the software is Challenge. So if we jump into Challenge, again, you're gonna get the same things you get to pick the green. Uh, Southern Lynx is the course background, I guess, that we've chosen. You also have camera work. You can have fixed or you can have it kind of move with the ball um, like you see in GS Pro. Let's just go start. So in this challenge section, you're basically gonna get the same putt. You're gonna get three goes at the putt. And what this is really gonna help you do is learn how to green read and also um, learn, I guess, your distance control on certain putts, uphill or downhill. So you get three putts from the same location um, and then it'll change the location for you. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump back to the main menu and we're gonna go into the next little section which is the multi-section. And from here, what you're gonna actually be able to do is play multiplayer on the Xpad RG. You can jump in on one of these games and you can see there on the right hand side, there's basically a point system with a monthly ranking and Within this section, you can create games or you can play people online, overseas, anywhere in the world that have Xput. So it's a really cool little section and it's all done within the actual unit itself, which is really cool. In here, you can choose the green speed, where you're gonna putt, how many points each match is gonna be, um, etc. So you can see I've played one match. If you look down the bottom there, I did win the match and I got about 1500 points. 
Okay, so backing out of that section, because I won't do a match today, the next little section you have is the Explorer section. So jumping into that, again, you're going to get to choose where you want to play. We'll go to Patriot Hills again. Let's go start. And this is pretty cool, because if you're going to go out and play a tournament, this is probably the section, if you have the pin sheet and the pin location of, of the tournament that you're going to play in, this is going to be really useful. This is where you can choose each hole individually. You can see a contour map of each green. So you could really, if you wanted to, get in here and, and do some planning on each hole and where you want to leave yourself. So we'll go out to the first hole. And like I said, if you were going to play in a tournament, you knew the pin locations on the days that you were going to play. You can come in here and you can select on the green where you want to drop the flag. So say you're playing the first round and they put the flag in this uh, back right location. We'll select that there. And now you can choose where you want to drop your ball. So you can think, hey, it's the first hole. I just want to put it in the middle of the green, play safe. So we can put the ball right in the middle of the green. And now it's going to show you what your putt's going to be like on the first hole. And you can actually practice what your putt is going to be like. We're going to be left about a 27 foot putt, slightly up the hill, left to right. So that's really good. I, I love this section. If if it had more courses, that's the key. It needs more courses. All right, guys, and that's going to be my initial impression slash review of the X-Putt RG. I have been using this quite a lot, especially since I've done my uh, thumb injury. It is a fantastic device for figuring out what you're doing in your putting stroke and also learning how to improve your putting stroke. Hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, let me know. If you want to see more putting videos, let me know, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.